Hello, welcome to Foundations of Bible History. Today we're looking at the life of Erasmus and the Texas Receptus. My name is David Seeley. Thank you for joining me. Let's begin our lesson today. Here is a timeline showing you the time period in history that Erasmus lived. As you can see here, he lived also during the same time as Martin Luther in the early 1500s. This was a very troubled time. The Roman Catholic Church was in control of much of Europe, and they were very careful to keep the Word of God out of the hands of the public. They kept it in Latin. They kept it uh, difficult for the public to access it. But Martin Luther and Erasmus changed all of that. They began, they lit the fires of the Reformation and made the Word of God available for the public, for every person to be able to access it for themselves, which really destroyed the power of the Roman Catholic Church during that time, as we will see. So let's take a look. In recent lessons, we have explored two streams of Bible manuscripts. One began in Antioch of Syria, where Bible believers carefully copied and published the Bible. As you'll recall, Antioch is the place that we read about in the book of Acts, where the disciples were first called Christians there in Antioch, a very significant city. God had a purpose for Antioch. It was centrally located. Uh, the apostle Paul and Barnabas began their missionary journey right there in Antioch. They traveled from there around Asia Minor, starting churches and, and opening new ministries and, and preaching the gospel. And the Bible says from Antioch, the word of God was published throughout the region. There in Antioch, under the direction of the apostles Paul and Barnabas, they published God's word, they copied, and they're very careful. Their mindset was that the word of God is perfect and has nothing to improve. The other stream of manuscripts originated in Alexandria, Egypt. As you remember, the Alexandria, Egypt school was where heretics and unbelievers, false teachers, added false doctrines, false teachings to the texts. They made changes to the Bible's texts. In Alexandria, they believe the Word of God is not perfect, and they believe that adding the philosophies of man, we could improve upon somehow the Bible. The Alexandrian manuscripts have historically been favored by the Roman Catholic Church. The Alexandrian manuscripts were the sources used by von Tischendorf as he discovered the Sinaiticus document. It was an Alexandrian text, and it was passed down along with the Vaticanus Alexandrian text to Westcott and Hort, who in the 1880s published their new Greek text based upon Alexandrian manuscripts. It was a corrupted text. Their hidden goal was to influence England back into Roman Catholicism. In today's lesson, we will explore further the Alexandrian stream of texts, and we're focusing especially on a man named Erasmus. He compiled Alexandrian manuscripts into a complete Greek New Testament. His work is now known as the Texas Receptus, or Received Text. Texas Receptus is Latin for received text. Another title often used is majority text because the fact that the majority of existing manuscripts that are still around today match this text. So it's called the majority text. The minority of text, the 3% of text or 5%, whatever small number of text, match the Alexandrian text. So the majority text is the one that matches there's the most available documents matching the Texas Receptus. The Texas Receptus is the compiled Greek manuscripts put into one New Testament published by Erasmus. It preserves 
the accuracy of the Bible as it was in Antioch. This Texas Receptus became the source for Martin Luther's German Bible just shortly after the Texas Receptus was published. Luther picked it up and translated it into German and set the world on fire in Germany, set the, set the revival fires of Reformation. And when they finally had the true word of God in their hands, God moved and broke the power of the Roman Catholic Church through Martin Luther's German Bible. Tyndale copied the Texas Receptus and translated it into English by hand in the 1500s. The Roman Catholic Church persecuted him for that. They actually killed him for that. They were fighting against the Texas Receptus. They were fighting against anyone who tried to get the Word of God into the hands of common man. The Texas Receptus also was the source text for other English Bibles, the Coverdale Bible, the Matthews Bible, the Geneva Bible, and then the King James Bible in 1611, and other English Bibles, as well as from other languages as well, use the Texas Receptus. Any Bible that is the true preserved Word of God came through the Texas Receptus, because the Texas Receptus is what God chose to use to preserve His Word. That's the Greek base foundation for the other Bibles that are published, that are the true Word of God. Much of the information for today's lesson comes from a book entitled Gipps Understandable History of the Bible by Sam Gipp. Erasmus was born in Rotterdam, Netherlands in 1466. He was a son of a Roman Catholic priest. When he was just a young boy, both of his parents passed away. His uncle did not want to care for Erasmus and his brother, so he sent them to a monastery to live. A monastery is a training school for Roman Catholic monks. So Erasmus grew up under the training of the Roman Catholic Church. They educated him, they trained him, they raised him. And one writer said the Roman Catholic Church had captured his body, but Quite apparently, his mind and heart were still unfettered. His body was in the Roman Catholic monastery, but his mind and heart saw through the corruption and saw beyond what the Roman Catholics were doing and what they were, saw their corruption. He constantly spoke out boldly against their abuses, what he saw in the Roman Catholic Church. He cried out against the wickedness he saw among the priests. He spoke out against it. He preached against it. He wasn't trying to necessarily leave the Roman Catholic Church. He was trying to correct it. He was trying to change people to see that they weren't following the Word of God. They were being corrupt, and he was hoping he could reform the Roman Catholic Church. He was so outspoken in the church, but yet he was highly respected because people knew he was uh, they, he was a respectable man. They respected him as a person, but they, they didn't like his, his crying out against their abuses and corruption. So to try to silence him, the Pope tried to bribe him by offering him a powerful position as a bishop. Maybe that would silence him. But he refused the position and kept on preaching. Although grounded early in Catholicism through no fault of his own, Erasmus was orthodox enough to speak out against the church's abuses. He rejected her Latin Vulgate Bible, which was corrupt, and he manifested the most non-Catholic attitude of all. That was, he had an intense burden to put God's Word into the hands of the common man, something the Roman Catholic Church did not want to have happen. At that time, the only Bible available in Europe was controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. They used the Jerome Latin Vulgate Bible, and they kept it in Latin. They used Bibles based upon the Alexandrian manuscripts, and they did not want the common people reading them. And the Bible that they did use by Jerome, the Latin Bible, was entirely built on the Vaticanus Greek manuscript. Erasmus believed everyone should be able to read the Bible. He said, do you think the scriptures are fit only for the perfumed, meaning the high class? 
He also said that he wanted to see the Bible in the hands of the farmer, the tailor, the traveler, and the Turk. Erasmus was writing of Scripture, he said, I would have those words translated into all languages. I long for the plow boy to sing them to himself as he follows the plow, the weaver to hum them to the tune of his shuttle, the traveler to sing them with the dullness of his journey. Erasmus' strong passion and desire was to get God's word into the hands of every common laborer, every common person, that no one would have to go to the priest or to the church to get understanding of the word of God. They could understand the word of God for themselves. He didn't deny the need to be a part of the church, but he did not want the church holding authority over the Bible. Each person has the opportunity, that was his goal, that each person would have the opportunity to read the Bible for themselves. The inventing of the Gutenberg printing press was a major breakthrough during that time period. The most powerful event of the 15th century was the development of printing. Erasmus was right at the point of history when books would for the first time be affordable and accessible. No longer were manuscripts hand copied to order and preserved only by the rich. By 1501, there were more than a thousand print shops in Europe which had produced some 20 million copies of over 25,000 titles. All the works of Erasmus were published through the printing press. Therefore, they found their way into a wide range, the hands of a wide range of people. God planned it out that the printing press would be invented at the same time period of history when the Texas Receptus would be published because God promised to preserve his word to every generation and the Texas Receptus was the next step in God's fulfilling of his plan to preserve his word for every generation. This was the backbone of all the future uh, Bibles that are to preserve the word of God. They come from the backbone of the Texas Receptus. And so God, in, in his providence, caused the printing press to be invented at the right time to publish the word of God in the Texas Receptus. What a powerful God, a God that keeps his promise to preserve his word. Erasmus collected all the Greek manuscripts he could get his hands on. He carefully examined them and looked them over and understood and then studied them to see which ones were reliable. He rejected the Vaticanus and other texts that were influenced by Alexandrian manuscripts. He knew that Jerome's Latin Vulgate was based on the Vaticanus, so he refused to use it. He published his first edition Greek text in 1516. He refined it and published his second edition in 1519, just three years later. The first two editions did not contain an important verse, 1 John 5, 7. That verse has been a hot topic of debate among Bible scholars. The reason it was not in the first two editions, Erasmus wanted to make sure he had a reliable Greek manuscript that contained it before he put it in his Texas Receptus. And until he found it, he held it out. But when he did find it, when he found a reliable Antiochian Greek manuscript that contained 1 John 5, 7, he included it in his work. 1 John 5, 7 is the scripture where God gives us a description of the three members of the Trinity. 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. 
liberal scholars like to say, because liberal scholars follow the Alexandrian manuscripts, and the Alexandrian manuscripts do not contain this verse, liberal scholars don't believe it's in, it should be in the Bible. We understand that God did want us to understand about the Trinity. It only makes sense, and he included it in the Word of God, and, and he allowed Erasmus to find an Antiochian manuscript that contained it, so he included it. And then he publishes third edition, including First John five seven. Jerome's Latin Bible placed too much authority in the hands of the Roman Catholic Church. That was another problem with the Jerome's Latin Bible. It was it was published by the Roman Catholic Church for the sake of promoting their authority. God used Erasmus to fulfill his promise to preserve his word to every generation forever. The Textus Receptus is God's preserved word in Greek and has become the foundation or the backbone for true Bibles in many languages. Erasmus' Greek Bible and other of his writings devastated the authority of the Catholic Church. Now that people could have the word of God that is preserved and true and it can be translated into their own language without errors and omissions, now the Pope and, his, and uh, the Church began to lose their authority. The Catholic Bibles exalted the Pope above the Word of God. The Texas Receptus, God used to get the true Word of God translated into German and English and others through this, through, through this source and helped to reestablish the Bible in the hearts of man as God's final authority. That's important. Shortly after the Texas Receptus was published, a German monk by the name of Martin Luther would translate it into German and start the fires of Protestant Reformation throughout Germany and eventually around the world. Martin Luther hadn't planned on anything so big happening, but when it did, he, he first of all nailed his document to the church wall with 95 criticisms of the church. And it started a fire of, of, of persecution and, and rage, and, and it just started all, it stirred up the people. And then when he translated his Bible into German, it stirred the Catholic Church further and stronger against him, but God's word prevailed, and people began to realize that God's word has more authority than any church. And so God used the Texas Receptus to be translated by Martin Luther into German. We'll study that in future lessons. But the Reformation started with the Texas Receptus. The most significant contribution of Erasmus to the Protestant Reformation was undoubtedly his Greek Latin Texas Receptus New Testament. And as I mentioned, that was the primary source for Luther's New Testament. It was also the primary source for William Tyndale's New Testament that he published in 1526. The Texas Receptus has a long, rich history. In four of the five past centuries, it was accepted exclusively as the true word of God. It was first produced at a time which immediately preceded one of the most turbulent times in Christian history, right before the big Reformation. It was produced by highly qualified scholar Erasmus, whose work was highly respected by scholars for many centuries, Modern-day liberal scholars, they try to discount Erasmus. They say he didn't have much education or he didn't have many documents. He had more documents available than we have today. Many have been destroyed since his time. He was highly respected, highly educated in his day. The most widely accepted and trusted Bible translations in English history came from the Texas Receptus. That would include Tyndale and and uh, Coverdale and Geneva Bible, and of course the King James. Those are the most widely accepted as reliable. They came from the Texas Receptus. Many of the quotations that early church fathers made in their writings match the Texas Receptus. They support the readings of the Texas Receptus. The majority of existing manuscripts today, ancient documents today, closely match the Texas Receptus. Somewhere around 95 to 98 percent of existing manuscripts match the Texas Receptus. That's why it's also called the majority text. Only 3 to 4 or 5 percent match the Alexandrian text. It has been said Erasmus laid the egg, Martin Luther hatched it. He started the Reformation with the Texas Receptus. Martin Luther continued it by spreading the word in German. God blessed it. 
In upcoming lessons, we'll explore the life of Martin Luther and how he lit those fires of Reformation and broke the power of the Catholic Church by translating the Erasmus Texas Receptus into German and help the common people have the Word of God. Remember, God has given us His Word. It's preserved in English. For us, the King James Bible is the preserved English Word of God. And we can have access to it. You don't have to depend upon a priest or, or a preacher to get the truth. You, can, you need to be listening to the preachers. You need to be understanding and be a part of a ministry and be a part of a, the, the fellowship of believers. But you have access to God's very words in your own hand, in your own language. Praise God. May God bless you. Thanks for joining me for this lesson today. I hope it's a blessing to you.